phenomenon of the so-called virgin birth has been found in species of birds, fish, other reptiles, but never before in crocodiles. Well, the crocodile uh, who laid the egg was obtained when uh, she was two years old and kept apart from other crocodiles for its entire life. Because of this, then, the park scientific team contacted uh, a US team from Virginia Polytechnic, which uh, specialised in uh, virgin births, known scientifically as uh, parthenogenesis. Now, Brina uh, Levine was a member of that team who wrote the code that allowed for this uh, discovery. Thanks so much for coming on the programme. Thanks for having me. So, uh, our first question is, is just how this works. How does it happen? Could you talk us through it? Absolutely. So, faculty to parthenogenesis is when a female that normally reproduces sexually uh, kind of switches gears and reproduces asexually. And the mechanism that produced this offspring called automictic parthenogenesis occurs when a female's egg fuses with another product produced during egg formation called a polar body, which also contains a set of chromosomes. Uh, and the two fuse together to make a diploid zygote. Um, similarly to how, you know, other organisms are fertilized. So what was that word that you said that the polar something, that's what it, it fuses yeah. with? Yeah, so a polar body. So polar, okay. during, during a process called meiosis that produces an egg, you produce some kind of secondary smaller units that are not eggs, uh, but that also contain chromosomes. And so in I automictic see. parthenogenesis, it's the second polar body that fuses with the egg of the female to produce a diploid zygote or a, or a zygote with a full complement of chromosomes. Got you. And because clearly there's this is all taking place uh, inside, the, 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 the mix isn't very good and the chances of survival not very good either. Yeah, there tends to be a lot of failure in parthenogenetic clutches. Um, it's not uncommon for most eggs to not develop or for the offspring to have issues or be malformed. But um, in many cases, there are times where the offspring grow up to be fertile adults on their own. So this particular case, it was a stillborn embryo. Um, but this is just the first record that we have in crocodilians. There is probably more out there. Interesting. And why are we just discovering this now? So uh, this is becoming much more prevalent um, due to both zoological collections um, and really good record keeping by zookeepers, uh, but also genomic technology that allows us to look at the genomes of offsprings and their moms and look for paternal contributions to those genomes. I see. So because the genome mapping and we've got we know what it is in the past, this could have been happening right under our noses, but we wouldn't have the technology to go in and look at it and determine this didn't have a separate parent. Absolutely, especially since in a lot of reptiles, you also have a phenomenon called long-term sperm storage, where some reptiles can store, or female reptiles can store sperm from a mating event for even up to six years. Um, this is the first time in crocodiles that we've been able to see that this was not a case of long-term sperm storage. This was absolutely facultative parthenogenesis, or at least we have very compelling evidence to show that it is. Brenna Levine, that's been absolutely fascinating. Thank you so much for talking us through it so clearly. Really appreciate your, uh, your experience and your hard work and your time with us. Thank you. Thank you.